Okay, moving on. Uh, can the transaction be reasonably explained? Uh, let's read the first paragraph. Not all alerts are time consuming or challenging. Some can be reasonably explained by information available to you that might not have been clear to the source of the alert. Because you probably have a large workload, it's tempting to, cl to quickly clear alerts. Yeah, so this is something you always need to look at, not just in like KYC, you know, in transaction monitoring, but in KYC as well. You know, you, you might be under pressure at work and you need to get things out. And it's sometimes it's like a confirmation bias in that like, you're like, oh, I, I can see, you know, oh, that's definitely like a, you know, name mismatch or, or you know, or something. And, and you basically just clear it really quickly, you know, but you can miss these things. So your organization relies on you to maintain quality standards and you don't want criminal behavior to continue unchecked. So this is why a lot of organizations do have like a quality assurance team. Um, so they basically, you know, they go through multiple levels just to check to make sure they're clear. So you not only have to do it because it's the right thing to do, but also, you know, you have to be aware there's going to be quality control checks later on. Before you clear the alert, have a clean, clear story that is based on objective facts. Document everything carefully. Uh, you know, everything in this industry relates to documenting it. So eventually as part of the file, whether it be like a transaction monitoring alert or a KYC or fin crime, it's basically going to be like a large scale PDF document that's going to be have everything. So you have to be aware that there's always going to be this big PDF document at the end that is going to be submitted. Just because there is a reasonable explanation doesn't mean that you should shortcut the work. So that's basically what I was saying. If you cannot reasonably explain the transaction, investigate further or escalate for additional support. Your other temptation is to escalate a case before you have done enough research. Unnecessary escalation places additional burden on more experienced investigators who in a typical organization are smaller team than first level analysts. So yeah, that's like a lot of things, you know, just keep working, uh, keep sort of doing it on your own, trying to sort of get the question right and try to answer it. You know, if you've made the, you know, you know, further analysts up the chain or investigators will respect you if they've seen that you've made an effort to try to find the answer before you got to them. So that's where you document everything and you can show this to the future, you know, investigators like, hey, I try to do this. I really tried hard. Uh, no luck. Uh, this is what happens, you know, so... And it will take up more time, which can lead to obviously further mistakes in the organization. Regulators often use the term reasonable to protect your organization. You rely on dual controls and the three lines of defense. While not perfect, it enables a risk-based approach and is a reasonable balance between cost and effectiveness. If you, your dual controls and your three lines of defense are all likely to agree that an explanation is logical and clear and unbiased, then your explanation is probably reasonable. Okay, so, what it's basically saying there as well is that, you know, at some point here, they have to draw a line. You know, you could, in theory, like, allocate millions of, like, just unlimited resources, and you still may have an issue. You know, you may not find it, but at some point, they'll eventually you have to have some sort of balance between getting work done and, and having the resources, because obviously you have more resources, it's going to cost too much money, and that gets passed on to the consumer. So a lot of these sort of, you know, regulators are conscious of that. So here's what it means by reasonable. Does the transaction fit within the pattern demonstrated by the client over time? Do similar clients use similar transactions? When was the customer profile last updated? Since then, has there been any related changes to the client's business that might actually naturally lead to this transaction? Usually when there's a major change with a client, you have to actually do a periodic review or a reassessment. Is this a past counterparty that might, that this, in this transaction might be the result of a relationship growing or changing? Is this an infrequent transaction that has happened in the past and found to be acceptable back then? Have regulations or technologies or market conditions affecting this customer change such as that this transaction might now be expect more expected in the future? You were hired to do cr for your critical thinking, you know, for your crucial thinking in, in human instincts. As you gain experience, your judgment will improve. You will be able to move more quickly and efficiently to decide if a transaction can reasonably explain or if it should be researched further. So look, obviously there's a lot of AI and data analysts and technology coming in to sort of automate what we do. But at the end of the day, there's still always going to be, you know, things will get more sophisticated and there will always be transactions that will need some sort of human element to make a judge. Okay, documenting your research. So basically, what this documenting your research just means is that you have to show that you, you, you've you documented everything and that you you can prove that, you can basically, you can prove your, your solution here. So whether you can't actually even find anything and you have to escalate to a to an investigator, you have to be able to prove that, that that's the case. Or whether you actually approve a solution here, then you have to, and then you can close the case and you can prove you can close the case. 
and a lot of these documents get put into a large PDF file, which you you know large file combine. You can't you combine them together in Adobe, and you you know you have a large file, and that usually goes onto the customer file. So these are records you know for the bank. So it's important. But let's go through them. To demonstrate that your organization has undertaken appropriate research to prevent financial crime, it is important to create an audit trail. So this is what it's talking about here, an audit trail. This means documenting the steps you've taken to demonstrate compliance efforts to auditors and supervisory authorities, include in how any inaccuracies or false matches were resolved. Some of this was straightforward as one source may be older and therefore less reliable than another source. You can save documentation as PDFs, printed out, or collection, which is what I mentioned usually happens. Uh, by printed out, I mean like you print it as a PDF and the file is available for you. Or collected in some other manner according to your organization's record retention policy. Uh, you might always get a question um, talking about how, what is the time frame for uh, record retention? It's usually around seven years. That's usually the, 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 the sort of the go-to amount. The process itself is defensive. You know, capture every relevant piece of information so that you, the process is defensible. A lot of uh, you know bosses in AML will say like you know you need to do your file so we can defend the file. That's something that we mentioned a fair bit. Once documented, your research should be properly and securely stored to respect privacy laws and data security. It's actually becoming a much bigger thing now as well within not just Europe but America and Asia now. It is important to document your research at a time it is performed. A search today might turn up a very different result to a search performed in several months' time when your decision is being questioned. Even though searches that actually, that's, I never really thought about that, that's actually quite smart. Even though searches that do not produce targets or relevant matches should be documented with appropriate date and timestamps. So if you search something and you don't find it, you know, this is a KYC thing as well, but if you search something and you don't find it, you still have to document that you searched this, you know, with the strings and you didn't find anything. Document your search strings and logic. Uh, search strings, logic and keywords. Sometimes the method and logic behind generating search results can be as important as results themselves. I've never really, I've never really found this to be, to be, you know, accurate. You know, I think there's always been a lot of emphasis on you know, using the right search strings and, and you do have to document this stuff. You know, I've been in banks where we actually document it, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Documentation will help demonstrate that you have followed a risk-based approach. Always be aware of data privacy laws and data security protocols, tools, databases, and methods for research that may be acceptable for one organization, may not be acceptable in another organization or jurisdiction. You know, that's one thing, you know, you need to remember that banks do things differently, although a lot of it's similar. Some do do things differently, and you need to go by whatever policies and procedures they have. Make sure you have a process in place that documents the research as to you capture the information so nothing gets lost or forgotten. By developing research notes and having a template to complete, you'll increase the, the likelihood that you're capturing all the required information.